Hello and welcome to Women Empowering Wednesday. I'm your host, Teresa Scudder, the founder of Kino Women Enterprise. And with me, I have my two trusty sidekicks. I have my daughter, Naija Reese, and my sister, Lisa Scudder. And today's topic is dealing with unforgiveness. All right, we're going to dive right into this. Unless, Naija, you got some little things you want to say before we get started? Well, I mean... I would say let's let's give some people some time to log on. So while you know what I mean, as soon as we get on, I'm ready on and pop. I let's get it could crack. I know you. I'll be like, let's get on in it. <laughs> they would have to catch a later alligator. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how I get. You know, I'll be ready to do this. <laughs> well, I mean, let's let's give some people some time. You know, um, those who are logging in, if you went in mind first, hitting that like button, sharing this with a friend, amen, help us out here. Um, also, um, some things that are coming up with um, KWE, we have um, our members um, only lunch in, yes. so... If you have not sent in your RSVP and you were um, are, are or were a member of KWE, make sure that you do hit us up so this way we can make sure that you are accounted for. Um, then um, one of our members, um, Nicole Mayfield with You Matters 2, um, next month, she is having her um, walk against bullying. Um, mm-hmm. Is that October 15th, right? Yeah, October 15th. October 15th. I believe it's an all-day um, event. Uh, I went last year. It was totally cool, awesome. Mm-hmm. It was so fun for the kids. Um, um, they have um, their special guest, um, Ali Tominique. Um, he'll be performing. Um, they have some um, visitors, some, uh, I believe, um, Miss American team, uh, team. There's like Chloe Hiller, Alyssa Hernandez. Um, they will be um, guest speakers there. Um, I think that, um, Dr. Tara Armstead, she will be present. Um, she will be a guest speaker there, performance by um, Bella. She will be there um, as well. Um, they have um, uh, 
of people who are part of the team of DJ Dangerous, um, just energy, which was really awesome for the kids. They do like bubble runs and have them dancing on stage and have different activities for them. Um, so it's going to be full fun. Uh, it'll be at uh, Centennial Park in, I believe that's Pe Peoria, Arizona. Yes. Peoria. Yeah, it is Peoria. Okay, yeah, because, you know, for me, like, Peoria, Glendale, and Phoenix, they just be all come together. together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they all run like, together. <laughs> so come out October 15th, Centennial Park, um, and help um, you matters too as they stomp out bullying this year as their for their anti-walk against bullying. Also, we have our um, Kingdom Sewing School campaign running. Mm -hmm. If you have not seen the ads, um, um, look on our page. I will actually play um, just a little um, video clip sent in by our president of our Hades board. Let me just get that video up. And I will share that with you guys. Hold on. Let me get my screen. This is why I like um, what it's called. I prefer um, Streamlabs. Because <laughs> all I have to do is click a button. Here on Zoom, you got to do a lot of clicking. Here we go. Hello, my name is Rosalind Finellis, and I am assistant pastor of Kingdom Family Training Center, Haiti, and president of Kingdom Woman Enterprise, Haiti. Our mission is to serve women in the community by gathering them to teach them trades and providing resources so they can support their families. One way we would like to help these women are by building a sewing school. With your donations, you can make that dream come true. When you pledge a monthly donation of $42, we will send photos and videos of our progress and how your donation is helping change lives of women in Haiti. You can do this by visiting our website at kingdomwomanenterprise.org under the campaign tab. Or you can also send donations of any amount to Kingdom Woman Enterprise Cash App at dollar sign KWE Me One with the note Haiti Sewing School. And those donations will be directed to our program. Anything you give is a help. Anything you can give is a help. All right. So if you would like to be a part of our sewing school campaign, um, you could do so by um, visiting our website and um, signing up to be a co-founder via um, kingdomwomenenterprise.org under the campaigns tab. And, um, or you can send um, any kind of the donation of any amount to the KWE's cash app at dollar sign KWE me one and um, just put in the note Haiti sewing school and we'll make sure that contribution goes there. So thank you again, our president Rosaline Finellas for um, um, all the hard work that you do in Haiti to make sure that underserved women gets the support that they need to support their families and be empowered in Haiti. Yes. All right, so yes. let's get started. Shout out to Miss Felicia. Thank you for logging on. How you doing, Mama? <laughs> she normally join us. Thank you, Felicia. For that is not Asia's other mother, Felicia. She has adopted not Asia. And, uh, and treat her as her own child. Yes, she does. <laughs> All right. 
like we said, our topic today is dealing with unforgiveness. So that's what we're talking about today. Um, Lisa, you want to start? Because, I mean, me and our age will be talking all the time. You want me to start, huh? Yeah, we want you to start. Okay, where you want me to start at? Uh, <laughs> where do you what do you think to... about dealing with unforgiveness? What is that's a big subject. Mm-hmm. Unforgiveness. Okay. From my point of view, or just talking about myself, I believe unforgiveness is one of the hardest things for people to do. One, because it deals with your heart. Because the only way you can forgive someone is that you got to forgive them from the heart. We can forgive them from the mind and we can say it, but it's a heart thing. And the reason why I say that is because, um, you know, God said, if you can't forgive your fellow man, then how do you expect for him to forgive you when he has forgiven us of all our sins and wrongdoing? You have to show that same that same act of love. Like he told Peter, you know, you're supposed to forgive your brother. He said, how many times should I forgive him? Seven times? He said, no, 70 times, 70 times, 70 times, 70. So he's saying it's a always, it's always, you're always forgiving because that's part of being like Christ is forgiving and loving one another. So even God said in his word that he don't even remember our sins no more from, from as far as the East is from the West. He don't even remember them. That's how far they are even in his mind. You know, once he throw them in the seas of unforgiveness, I mean, forgiveness, he don't remember them no more. Well, I need a cup of that because (laughs) a cup of uh, forgetfulness. (laughs) As you know. As long as you're human and on this earth, your brain is going to let you remember some things. But see, the reason why it's a hard thing, because when you really forgive from your heart, you won't remember it no more. You really won't. And I'm not saying that it's something easily done, but we do have to practice at it and we really have to be uh, real real with our own self concerning it. And I'm going to use myself as an example because, you know, I was hurt, you know, by my by things that I've been through with certain people. And I found myself saying, oh, I forgive them, but I ain't forgot. So how can you forgive if you, if you haven't forgotten it? But God dealt with me with that. And I realized that it was a heart matter and not just something that you say, oh, yes, I forgive you. Oh, you apologize. Yes, I forgive you. We say things like that, but do we really forgive them? So you can't bring back up what I did in the past if you forgave me, right? So the Lord dealt with me with that. And he let me see that it was a hard thing. So I had to really come to the Lord. And I used, I had to tell him exactly how I felt about the person who I didn't have forgiveness for, you know, and I had to tell him what I felt because he already know what's in our heart. He already know what we think we can pretend with one another, but God knows the inward part of man. Like he said, I know what's, I know the heart of man. Okay. So I had to be real with him. And I was like, no, I want somebody to beat him up. To be honest with you, I want them to beat him to a pulp. Yep. That's just how I feel. To be honest. I have a question. Now, you know, my thing is, okay, you said you forgive somebody, you forgive them with the, with the heart. And like, you will forget, but like, say if there, you know, like they said, we always got a testimony about things that we go through. And that is part of your testimony as well. So say what's in that testimony, you start talking about what happened, what happened in that situation. And it brings back those feelings, like them hurt feelings, I'm saying. Then I don't so, think you So you yeah, know, you're, you're totally, I, I think with the forgetting part, it's not so much that you forget the situation, you forget the pain of the situation. That's right. So you can talk about it and not not feel resentment, not feel mm-hmm. anger. And even sometimes you can talk about those things and not feel the pain of it anymore. And that's how you know that you have really totally gotten over it. Yes, You've forgiven you, that yes. person and you have 
also gotten over the pain of the situation. Mm -hmm. And so there is nothing that is holding you um, keeping you in bondage because there are things that you have encountered in your life you could talk about and it doesn't bring you it doesn't bring you tears if any kind of tears it's tears of joy and thanksgiving of how God helped you yeah, to overcome it yes. but when it's coming from a place of pain and you're still talking about it brings brings you hurt and suffering <laughs> that means that you still haven't recovered from that yes but what about trusting what about trusting? Now, say about if you forgave and it don't, it doesn't hurt you anymore, like the, a situation or whatever, whatever you went through um, in a situation and you forgot and you forgave and you still, you cool with that person. Y'all cool. And y'all probably even chit chat a little bit here and there. But what about trusting that person? Do that come along with being like that's forgiveness? Not- And I think that's where people get mixed up when, okay, just because I forgive you does not mean that our relationship remains the same because just because I forgive you, it does not entitle you to the right to have access to my life. It doesn't entitle you to have my friendship. It doesn't entitle you to, to have my trust either. I can forgive you. I can let things go, but my trust is something you would have to earn back. This is this is reconciliation, not forgiveness. So just so like true, even true. With, with with even with God, He can for you know He forgives us for things that we did, but mm-hmm. there still is a reconciliation process. We still have to let go of some things. We still have to turn for some things. This is regaining that trust. That's that's re. Build, we still have to rebuild that relationship. Alicia said, forgive and move on. Forgive and move on. Well, you forgive and you can move on, but a lot of times, sometimes God would bring them same people who have hurt you to see if you really have forgiven them. You know, he I, I believe them, he'll bring them back to you because you can say, oh, Lord, because everything to me is still a testing. It's still a testing and a, and a progress that that we have to progress and, and, and overcome to get to the next level of where God is calling us. So mm-hmm. we say, oh, we, you know, I forgave him and yes, I am. And I've been, and you know, it could be 10 years later. And right. And God yeah. will bring that person back to you. And they might even say something to do something that, you know, used to cut you or, you know, touch you in a way that you'd be like, see, that's what I'm talking about. But he will still bring that person, he can bring that same person back just to see where your heart still is concerning that person. Well, I, I believe that's to be true because that, that have happened to me um, when I was in North Carolina, when I was in North Carolina and um, not aging a father, you know, he, when we was in Jersey, you know, he attacked me in the middle of parking lot, whatever. So anyway, now some years have went by and like I was conversating with him, you know, because he was trying to reconnect with the kids or whatever. So I was like, fine, you know. And so I was talking to him and, you know, he brought up like this business and stuff he want to do. And we was talking about that. But then, you know, he wanted to apologize. But then then he act like he had for amnesia about what he did to me. And so as I hear him talking, I, I didn't say a word. I was letting him speak. And as he was talking. I was getting pissed off. I was getting, <laughs> and that's what I was feeling. I was getting pissed off because as he was talking, it was like, like, now, like, oh, it wasn't that bad. Okay. <laughs> right. So I uh-huh. was getting, I was, I got heated all over again. Right. And so after I hung up with him, right, I had to call my pastor up at the time. And I was like, you know, talking to him and I was so mad. I was crying. Right. And I was like heated and I was crying. So then he was, and so he was saying the same thing, you know, you know, Teresa, you have to really let it go and you have to move. Cause even though you know what happened with that, of course, he's going to have a different say because he don't want to really face the what reality he, of what he did. That's right. So yeah. you have to, he's yes. still doing Yes, he's right. Not- so you have to realize to be, you have to be okay with that and move on. But at that moment, no, I was because, like, 
Because unforgiveness keep us in bondage. That's right. what it was. Like. The other person could care less, really. How you feeling, if you feeling anything, if you forgave them, because sometimes they'll do dirt to you and come back and ask for a favor. Excuse me, uh, mm -hmm. can you be <laughs> nice? You know you want to say the N-word. Excuse me, N-word. Are you for real? Mm -hmm. so, it's really for your, it's for you to be free and for right. you to stay. And I'm telling you, God dealt me with it and he dealt with it with me with many people. That's why I keep telling y'all I go to the left and I have to have these conversations because, you know, they be, the flesh be saying slap them one good time, you know, but in order for me to really know that I have forgiven someone, I have to go to God and I have to tell him how I feel at that moment and really cleanse myself of that and realize that and, and look at them the way Jesus look at us through, through the eyes of love. Even though you don't be wanting to give them love, excuse mm -hmm. me, you be wanting to really give them the flesh, but you <laughs> look at them in the eyes of love and say, Father, they know not what they do. And that's really, I'm not saying this is easy because this is, these are, this is processes that you have to go through. Yeah. This is you get born again, then you be like, oh, I just love everyone. And I've just forgiven. No, you don't. That is a lie from hell. Because <laughs> soon as you come wrong to you, that old nature be like, it's a process. Are you studying the word, praying, and really living it? Because, you know, James said, hey, you know, soon as you hear the word, here come the enemy. He come mm -hmm. to take it from you. So if you don't, every time we hear the word and, and we hear these teaching on different things, the enemy come right away to see if we've taken it in and it's falling on good ground. <laughs> what ground Felicia, wait, Felicia said, it's like you drinking poison and thinking the other person will die. <laughs> yes, forgiveness <laughs> is for you. It's the truth. Oh, that was, that's <laughs> good. I got to use that one. The enemy going to come to see He's going to come. And that's where the word of God said, did it fall on good ground, stony ground? What, what, what ground in your heart did this mm -hmm. word fall? Because it all has right. to do with the heart. So, you know, and I only can speak for me, but, you know, I have had times when I be saying, you know, Lord, I know you're right. And I'm crying saying, I know you're right. But just give me this moment. I, just give me this moment. <laughs> Lord, and just give me five minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's just to be mad, Lord, and then I'm a repent. Uh, you sound just like me. I'll be doing the same thing. I'm like, I know I got to get over it, but Lord, I'm so mad. <laughs> yeah, but see, I think this is where also people get things confused because Jesus says, be angry and sin not. not. So yeah. you getting angry is a, nat is a natural reaction because mm -hmm. even Jesus got angry. Yeah. It's when you allow that anger to turn into resentment, <laughs> to... Mm -hmm. To turn into bitterness, to turn into jealousy, to turn mm -hmm. into hate, to where yes. you're actually wanting, yes. you're, wanting um, you're you're being hostile, you're being wicked, you're you know you're you're scheming and planning, you're sowing discord, you're gossiping, you're spreading rumors, you're actively doing things to cause harm to that yes. other person. Yes. This yes. is where your 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 anger has become unhealthy mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. this is when it has become ungodly right. you know right. it's all right to feel an emotion if someone slaps you you're gonna feel pain you're gonna get angry but instead of reacting in hostility back is you know okay i'm angry calm down and then get over the anger I have to talk to when you're sitting there letting it brew and then you're mm -hmm. pretending like it's okay and you're allowing it to brew and it's causing you to act mean and hostile and mm -hmm. nasty towards the other person that is when it becomes sin this yeah. is when you're allowing your anger to turn into sin i know um darius daniel um dr darius daniel i mean he told on the thing of forgiveness and stuff too and i i remember listening to him one morning so he was saying you know he talked about the scripture about when peter asked um jesus about how, how many times you're supposed to give seven times and the lord said no seven times 70 and so then he said because you know something may come up later on in life <clears throat> that you did not know about that that person made it dead or said or whatever. And then it's going to bring you back to that time. And you're going to have to be able to, you have to forgive that person 
again, but I say more day because there's some parts that you might not know have happened and been later on in life or laid down the line is going to probably come to you or bring it up or whatever. Somebody might bring it up or whatever the case may be. And then there's more aspect to that situation that you knew of, did not know about, mm -hmm. because I think God only allows you to hear certain things at a time, <laughs> let you hear certain things like, okay, let me just get them a little bit, tidbit so they know. And then, okay, let them, let some time go by. Then a little bit more come out of, uh, what happened in that situation? And you'd be like, oh, okay, now I get what you mean, but you're going to have to keep forgiving this person because every time I turn around, either they still saying something or they said something and it wasn't true, it wasn't right. That's not how it went down, whatever the case may be. So I, I get that. I know sometimes though, I, I, I get like that. I do have to talk to myself too as well, Lisa, because I'd be like, mm -hmm. Lord, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> Like, to be honest because see there was a time like when I would get upset with someone that they did something negative or something that gets me like I could forget I could get over it but I was the type don't come back and talk to me after me and you just been through something you know you need to give me a, a, a little minute because see I'm still brewing I'm still brewing over this and right now it's not the time for you to come back to talk to me so your best bet is to just go on and let me get over it so I can tell the Lord, I know it's the flesh and I got to kill it right now and I need to respond in a, in a nice way and not a, a you know, the flesh way. So right. I own it. So don't talk to me right now. Well, we should it. say, if you <laughs> slap me, I'll probably just slap you back then ask the Lord, please forgive me. Y'all, I'm praying for me. <laughs> <'all. laughs> He's supposed to do. He said, "No, no, cheat." He said, "So they can slap the other cheek." She said, uh, "You slap me, like, you probably get slapped back." I'm gonna run out of cheeks to give. <laughs> she said, "I'm probably gonna slap you back and just ask a little forgiveness." But, but you gotta cheek. take because that is gonna be your reaction, even though that is what the Bible said. You know, if someone slap you, turn and give them the other cheek. You know what Jesus was all all God and all man too. So, you know, we working on that. You know, he came out that way. <laughs> no, he said he had to go through it too. Yeah, he did. He did have to go he through it. But he, um, he, to and he was going through it in his walk, in his walk too. And That's I know right. he had to go through it, but, you know, but your That's reaction, so your first reaction, if somebody smack you, your first reaction is not going to be... <laughs> That's not gonna be your first reaction. I'm sorry. Your first reaction, either you're gonna wanna smack that person back, you're gonna draw, you might cuss that person out or something. It ain't gonna be godly. But <laughs> if they smack me, I will be probably in shock for a minute. And once the shock wear off, then I don't know, I don't know which way I might go, because it all depends on what day they may find me in. So they might find me in a day where I feel like where I might be real holy and prayed up. But if they find me in one of the moments when I'm not. They might get something to back with me. We like the kids be like, what the freak? <laughs> the kids be like, what the freak? What happened? What's going no. on here? Are you kidding me? That's Aya. Are you kidding me? <laughs> my favorite word was, what the Sam Hill? I used to say, my, what is that, your curse word? Yes, what's the Sam Hill? Shut the front door. <laughs> That's another one they be saying, shut the front door. <laughs> <laughs> You have this is my thing too, right? Sometimes, right? Because some people are just toxic. I mean, they're just toxic, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's like you can forgive people, but some people you just can't walk with. How mm -hmm. can two walk together unless they agree? agree and there's yeah. some people that you're just you're just not called to walk with in life. And I mean, even God himself, when, when them Israelites was getting on his nerve, he was like, look, Moses, I'm going to help y'all get to this promised land, but I'm going to go about my business because if I stay here any longer, I'm going to have to kill all of them. All of them. What made God, let me tell you, what made God stay was that Moses, Moses reasoned with him. He said, look, now these people are called by your your name right yeah. and so everybody identifies them with you if you forsake these people here if you leave us here 
and allow the nations to overtake them and you don't walk with us, what will it say about you? It's going to make you That's look right. bad because you said that you are their God. And so everybody, when they look at us, they see you. So if you just, you know, let us be here, it's going to make you look bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Moses was an intercessor. <laughs> I was like... He was a true right. intercessor. He, <laughs> right? He, I'll do it. But he, I'm going to do it for my the, the Lord had to walk away, right? He said, let me go. He said, because I'm about to hurt somebody up in here. I'm about to kill, <laughs> I'm about to kill all of them. I'm about, to, all, I'm about to shut it down. I'm about to show but, it up. And so sometimes God will do things just for his own reputation. It has nothing to yeah, do with his own, his his own, own name. Yeah. Good and stuff like that. It's some things he will do for his own personal reputation. So this way you can't say that he's bad or that he wasn't, he wasn't fair to you. So there's some things also in your life and people that you deal with that sometimes you would just have to show them mercy for your own name's sake. They don't deserve it. That's the truth. And, and, and if you, if you did something or retaliate, it's going to make you look bad. Right. If you do something, you know that they will twist it and make it make it seem like you're the bad person. And so for your own integrity, for your own, you know, um, for your own namesake, you have to have self-control and just take that beating. You know, that could be a your job, that could be a coworker, like, you know, what they're doing is bad, what they're doing is wicked. But you know what? I could, you know, I could snitch on them, get them fired. But for my own name's sake, this way they can't say I did anything or whatever the case might be. You just take those beatings. <laughs> and you it'll be hard, but you're doing it to glory, get on it. It's for the glory of God because it was just like mm -hmm. uh, with Joseph. Like, he never, he never, uh, when someone said something about him that was negative or wrong or accused him of doing something that wasn't right, he never defended himself. He never defended himself. Even when Pharaoh's wife said he did this and he did that, he never defended himself. He allowed the Pharaoh to believe whatever he felt or whatever he wanted, but he also trusted that God was going to see him through it. Now, sometimes mm -hmm. I will allow you to go through, you know, persecution or go through things for his namesake, just like he did Job. He was like, he found them faithful. So sometimes we do end up in a situation where people do things to us and, and we have not done anything wrong to them. We, we, we've never done anything or even spoken anything wrong, but the enemy just had them against you for no reason. They, they don't even know why they don't they lost, like you. I said, they, they lost their mind. Their minds is lost. They're like no. Saul. Well, I know, know that's just giving over no. to a reprobate mind and they're just crazy. No. <laughs> yeah. Because I had a supervisor like that. I had a, a supervisor. Said that, though. He said the enemy set up people against you for no reason. I'm telling you, it's, it's that's true it's, because I, I'm telling you, I had a supervisor like that, and, right? I, remember and I was I had was moved from one office to another office, and like so I wasn't, and they did things different from where I was at before, <clears throat> and so I was trying to catch on and whatever. So like my supervisor, she was the kind of person she'd be waiting for people walking the door and checking her watch and you know and making sure you're on time and you one minute late she wants you to take it from your pto time one minute she wants you to take it from your pto time like she had no grace at all this woman and so she was like so i was having some difficulties and so she told me she was like well um and we're gonna we probably take you back to training if that don't work then we probably gonna have to let you go so i spoke to the lord and i was like lord now, I know you opened up the door for me to come over here. I know you did. And I know that you did not bring me all the way over here to be getting fired. I know that. I know that can't be the case. So, Lord, I ask you to remove her. <laughs> I said, I don't want to see nobody lose their job. I don't. Because I know 
people need their money to pay their bill. So I don't want you, I don't want her to lose her job, but father, I need you to fix this situation. Within like a week of that, I hear that she's leaving and moving to another office. So another coworker, another coworker of mine said, you sure did pray her up out of here, didn't you? I said, I sure enough did. (laughs) <laughs> because I know the Lord didn't bring me over here so I could be losing my job because some people is just cuckoo for Cocoa Pop. They're crazy. They just giving over to a reprobate mind. And a lot of that is because they have unforgiveness in their heart. So they're bitter, they're angry, and then they're taking it out on other people. Um, some people are just selfish. Some people just like to make things harder for other people. But there's also cases like, you know, Saul and David's case, where Saul was c- consistently hostile, right? And then David would forgive Saul. I mean, God would literally, and so, some of us, some of us wouldn't have did like David did. Some of us would have said, God delivered Saul into my hand. I'm about to kill him. I'm about to take care of business. God is on on my side. God is on my side because he placed him here. So that means that he want me to kill him. (laughs) You know, that's how some of us would have took that. That's a sign from God. Uh, That's what I'm supposed to kill him. (laughs) And that's how some of us would have took it. But I mean, literally, God delivered Saul into David's hand three times. Three but that was times. To prove Saul to let him know that he could have taken your life three different times if the he humble. would, but because he was humble and see, he really loved Saul and he he yeah. knew that he right. was God's servant. He had every Saul. good intention. He had every good intention yeah. for Saul. He was looking out for Saul. Matter of fact, he even rebuked his own armor bearer and said, who's your armor bearer? You should be, you should be killed because you let your Lord be delivered into someone's hand and his whole life could have been taken. I shouldn't have been able to get this close to him. You should be, you know, you know, so he rebuked his own armor bearer and everything like that. But one thing I would say- They don't make me like that no more. (laughs) No, but one thing I would say about David- he had mercy on him. He's like, you know, even though God is giving me the power and the authority right now to take your life, I'm going to show you mercy and not take it. And even though Saul apologized and said, you know, forgive me, my son, come home and everything like that. David yeah, said, that. I can't. I cannot walk with you. I'm sorry. I love you. And he called him father hey, back. Yeah, I love you, father. I care for you. But I cannot walk with you. I can't. I'm going to go my own separate way. And may God judge between you and I. So sometimes there are situations where it's like, sometimes being merciful is being away from that person. Like, look, because if you keep on doing what you're going to do, you're going to provoke me to a place where I'm going to be nasty. That's right. I have to guard my own heart. It would be unwise. It's just stupid for me to continue. I keep giving you this chance. You keep behaving the way that you behave. And it would be stupid of me to just, it's like, literally, I'm giving you the door. I At, the, at this point, I cannot blame you for treating me how you're treating me. Because mm-hmm. I already know that you're doing what you're doing. And I'm choosing to allow you into my life. So mm-hmm. any kind of pain that I endure because of this I can no longer blame you for this Mm -hmm. I'm inviting you yes and I'm dealing with the consequences Mm -hmm. of continuing this relationship with you yeah I know like the church I was going to out here uh pastor a pastor told on that the pastor of the church he took he told on that and he was he that was one of the things he was saying too he was like you can you can forgive people you can forgive them. That don't mean you have to be their best friend, go out to the cookout with them, go shopping with them, whatever. You can forgive them and move on. You know, it's, you know, you don't have to be where you have to be constantly around them all the time or hanging out and dealing with them like that. You can forgive them and, and just keep it moving. But what happens, what happens if you're in a place where someone has done wrong to you and done wrong by you, but you're in a in a situation and in a place where both of you still have to be around one another, and you still 
have to see this person or, you know, say it's a workplace mm -hmm. or it could, it could even be someone that you live with, a family member or, mm -hmm. it, you know, what do you do then? You still have to show grace and mercy to this person regardless. And even if they did that at that time, they may turn back around again and do something else. What do mm -hmm. you do? Then that's when you draw the tank between yeah. you draw the tank between the middle of the house and you say you stay on your side of the house and I stay on my side of the house. Now if it's in the workplace, you say you yeah. stay at your desk and I stay at my desk. <laughs> Yeah, and so you gotta do listening. you gotta do you gotta do an Abraham listening. and Lot thing. Create boundaries. Like, look, there's mm -hmm. there's hostility because we live together. We have to work together. We're kinsmen or whatever. Let, let there not be any feud between us. You go your way, and I you if you choose to be over here, I'm gonna be over here. It's creating those boundaries. Because okay. sometimes but if you're in the workplace, <clears throat> if you're in the workplace, you don't have no boundaries. Because all of y'all working in a building together or in an office together, you and you have to see this person. I'm not saying that you are up under this person, but you both come in together and through the same door sometimes. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying because I mean I have had that you, situation. Because where... I have been in that situation where I worked with someone and it's not that we really work close together but there has been time where we have crossed past this or either been in the same elevator or you know been in the same room or whatever and and let me tell you um on my behalf when i was in this situation i i really because i even went to the lord i was like what is the problem here you know it, it's a problem here because I don't under you know I don't understand why I'm still going through this dealing with this person like this you know I don't do anything to them I'm not bothering them but then I had to look at it in a different manner and then what I had to do was I had to start praying for the person because yeah. the fact of the matter was they were coming against me which they had no reason to come against me because I wasn't mm -hmm. doing anything to them. But this is where I heard the message that uh, that Apostle had taught on was saying how sometimes God set up people to come against you for no apparent reason. You haven't done anything to them. So I had to ask the Lord, what is what is the problem here? You know, mm -hmm. is it, you know, maybe I'm doing something that, that offends them or make them dislike me. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm putting on an air or something that they just don't like uh, is it me? Am I doing something wrong? So the Lord showed me how I had to overcome this person, you, you know, to win their heart. Mm -hmm. And for one, I had to pray for them. So I used to pray for them every day. I'd be like, you know, Father, whatever it is, you know, remove, remove it from them, you know, cast down whatever's in their mind, the enemy putting it. So I had, but, but see, then I had to start doing little kind acts, even when they were mean and just nasty for no reason. So I start bringing them things like, you know, coffee, because I knew they like coffee, a little donut or something. And at this time, I used to buy Avon a lot. I used to buy little stuff from Avon to give to them. And, and, and you could tell because the word of God tell you, you know, it's like heating coals of fire upon people's head who, who you know, they mistreat you for no reason, but you still being kind to them. They don't understand it. So I had to reverse it and I had to start like loving them like we was the best of friends. And this person used to just, just do things that didn't make no sense. But no matter what they did, I prayed for them every day and I would just do little kind. So eventually, they end up leaving the place, but before they left, they came to me and they confided into me some personal things that they were going through, right? And then when they was, you know, confiding to me their personal thing, then I felt bad. I was like, well, no wonder you were just mean and evil for no yeah. reason. Well, what you, why are you taking it out of me? But the one let me know the reason why it was being taken out on me because he knew that I was born again, 
you know, when nobody else probably in the, in the, in the, you know, the company that I was in was born again, he knew I was. So he knew that I can take what they were doing to me mm-hmm. without acting back in a fleshly way. And I was like, okay, Lord, but, but you know what, but why, you know, don't, don't, don't be doing stuff like that. That ain't nice, <laughs> you know, because, but he knew that I could handle it. So when the person confided to me, I prayed with them. And you know what they told me? They was like, you know what? I've never met nobody like you before. I said, mm-hmm, that's Jesus, girl, because you just don't know. <laughs> that flesh could have rose up at any time. But it, even though they didn't know what it was, but they knew it was something diff- different in me than it would have right. been somebody, somebody else. else. Because of the fact of the way that I reacted to what they did. Right. So that's what I'm saying. When you are in a close environment with someone where you can escape, like, I mean, you you know, if you got a job, y'all both got to get there. Mm-hmm. Y'all both got to work there. So right. what are you doing? When you I know, a- Devin said that she had the same problem too and she prayed for the person, but originally she said she wanted to transfer in from wherever she was at. Yeah, the Lord opened the door to transfer her. <laughs> her. So- that she could get away from that evil spirit and the way i see it too it's just like okay some you know people are under the influence of the you know of the evil one whether you know it's some that goes on in their life they're full of anger hurt, uh, whatever the case might be. and so it you know they're given over to to that what should bring us peace and joy even in the midst of 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 you know um what is that opposition like that because we know we're aware and so now that you know once you understood okay she this person's gone through something and their mind is totally Mm -hmm. given over to the enemy because you have that understanding instead of getting offended by their actions, you know, this person's heart is sick. Their mind is sick. But They're just totally like, in their self. And so this way, you, you instead of getting offensive, you get defensive. You de- Now you're wanting to defend that person from the enemy. Like whatever the enemy is doing to this person's heart, mind, however the enemy is trying to destroy their life, using bitterness and unforgiveness, whatever it is, Lord, deliver them, set them free, you know, instead of getting, uh, um, you know, reacting to them, responding to what the Holy Ghost is saying. And this is why we have to walk in the spirit in all things, because the Holy Spirit will give us those downloads. Like, look, no, don't, don't react. Like this person is going through something. Mm -hmm. So this person, and also the Holy Spirit makes you aware of people's mindsets and their attitudes. If you think about even with Jesus, when he was healing people and stuff like that, the Holy Spirit made him aware of the people's hearts. Look, if you do this, this is how they're going to respond. This is how they're going to act. And he was like, how long will y'all be wicked? You know, some things, it does cause for you to come to confront it you have to be right. you know about it because some spirits is just jezebel spirits and as long as you go on un- unconfronting it they're going to continue to be manipulative trying to control intimidate dominate people some people are just full of pride there's nothing that you can say speak to them um uh, that will get through to them because mm-hmm. their hearts are so hardened some of them are, their hearts are so hard and there will be nothing that you can say to them and their minds are just totally delusional. I mean, it's like you be listening to them trying to explain and defend why it's okay for them to do what they're doing. And you're just like, do you hear yourself? Uh, do you hear the words that's coming out of your own mouth? It doesn't even make sense. To make it say preach. <laughs> it is it, it's like and then you're become uh, this person has been given over to a reprobate mind and a lot of their suffering and the things that they're going through is because of the fact that they have been given over to a reprobate mind and if you try to get involved all it all it's doing is causing you to have headache and chaos in your own life okay, I mean, when you see a person like that, that would you would you pray for them? 
you pray for them. Yeah, you pray for them. But some people, God will tell you, don't get, don't get involved. There's a reason why they're going through what they're going through. You know, yeah. that's why Jesus said, if they don't receive the message from you, Shake let the them be like a tax collector. But you then know, they're like, oh, but well, you're supposed to be a Christian. How are you going to act like that if you're a Christian? All that is is manipulation. That raises, that, that, what would Jesus do? What would yes. Jesus do? People that says that be cracking me up. They crack me up all the time. Oh, you know, you're you supposed to be Christian. Jesus because will lay for you and cast out that demon. So <laughs> let, me, let me lay hands on you. Come on. You being over. Christian ain't got nothing to do with the fact that uh, I'm going to just go leave you right here where you at. <laughs> and all it is 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 manipulation and you're being like and pretty much it's just like what it says about the devil that he comes up as an angel alike and no mm-hmm. wonder why his workers will come off as workers of righteousness mm-hmm. like they're trying mm-hmm. to tell you what is the right thing to do but they follow but this really they're just religious they're using the word of god manipulating yeah. it, Ma- it manipulate so they can get what they want or get the reaction that and, they want from you be, or to take advantage I, of you. Yeah, never, Felicia was like walking the spirit. I never knew you, but that's why we have to because sometimes we have to discern spirits and know what type of spirit we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. And there are some spirits that there are no compromising, no nothing. You have to just rebuke them and tell them go back to the pit of hell. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and leaving there because some people have really given themselves over. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah. The, like, girl, you walking in that crazy spirit, ain't you? Because yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, like, especially like if you read about the spirit of Leviathan, which is pretty much the spirit of pride, right? Mm-hmm. It literally, it literally says, "Will you reason with this person?" It's like, and he not, and you not end up on a leash. You, you wind up being the person in bondage, trying to deal with someone whose heart is pride. All that is like, they, they, all they want to do is debate. They, they're not, they're not trying to come to an, a compromise here. All they're wanting to do is continue to argue and debate with you so that they can pull out of you, get you out of character and then try to demonize you. And Mm so it's like, and you'll you'll see that very common in narcissists, narcissistic behavior. You can't not, you can't compromise and give in to that person. First of all, you have to be confrontational and Mm -hmm. be straight up, call them out on what they're doing. They are. And you cannot be friends. It's like you, are you gonna befriend Leviathan? You're gonna you're gonna end up you're gonna end up you know hurt. You're gonna end up in pain. You're gonna end up suffering for it. So someone who's like that, the Bible clearly tells you don't don't do that. Don't do that. Uh-huh. It tells you how to deal with someone who has a selfish heart. As a man think of in the mind, so is so he. Is he. Uh-huh. So if, if you meet someone who has a selfish heart, it tells you don't drink for them. Don't get favors from them. Don't don't take their their kindness, their, <laughs> their kindness that they're trying to show you when they're giving you stuff and they're acting oh, like yeah. they're out of love and you're their friend and stuff like that and they're trying to give you. He said, "Don't do it. Don't take from them because yeah. you're you going to regret, regret it. it. You will regret it. You will regret as it." They're, as they're doing for you, they're counting up the debt. Sure, they do. now. They're making you feel indebted to them, that they're entitled to, to things from you. And now they make you feel like you're obligated to them. And then all the compliments that you have from them, oh, they're so kind, they're so loving, they're so they're so generous and stuff. You're going to eat those words. Yeah, then you're going to be like, oh, they're so crazy. <laughs> Wait a minute. I live with a person. <laughs> I live and was married to a person like that. And it's, let me tell you, <clears throat> that is a rough spirit to deal with. It is a rough one. And believe me, you got to be prayed up constantly to even deal with it because it was that close to me. And really, I had to let God unravel it and let it be, and let it, let God 
do the cutting of the cord when it was time because you know that was something that was very like I never dealt with I've before. been there before I divorced it I never dealt with it before <laughs> in, in, a, in a relationship that was that close to me so when I was in it in a marriage like that it was something that was that really like took my life that was like my life was like this and then all of a sudden it went like this I was like thrown I was really thrown and but because I knew who God was and I knew his word that's the only place that I found uh really peace because literally being in that marriage I felt like I was drowning all the time like I was like just like the water was right here. And if I just dipped a minute, it would be there and I would be drowning. And I was like that for so many years. That's where that water was at, right, right under my nose, where I could, I'd be like, oh Lord. But only it was only God's word. Like he, when he said, I'm your shield, I'm your comforter, I'm your hiding place and your secret place. That is really where I found my strength at, to really be able to walk this. And it was something that God told me I had to do. He was like, you're going to have to walk this. You're really going to have to walk through this. And even though the whole time I was walking through it, there were times where I really felt like I was like I was really in a cage somewhere. But at the same time, I was also uh, uh, at peace, you know, even though. I felt like I was in a cage because I kept my focus on, on God. And even when the enemy, were, it was so, it was to the point where the enemy used to buffer me so bad that I really had to do what the word of God said. You got to close the door and really get into a worship state to the point. That's why I tell you, if you ever get in God's presence, God can, let me, when you come about in his presence, you be floating so high, the devil could come and smack you. Be like, come here, baby. Now, you know that wasn't right. Now, don't you do that anymore. Because you, let me tell you something, the love and the peace of God will come on you where no matter what demon come up against you, you be like, you just push it to the side and you just keep floating because you have been in his presence. And mm -hmm. that's what I had to go. I had to stay there in order to walk that life. And believe me, when I got finished walking it, I was like, God, ain't nobody do this but you. Cause let me tell you something, Lisa tapped out the first month I got in it. I was like, I'm out of here. I was tapped out the first month, but because of you and because of your grace and mercy, you walked me through this. And I knew it was him who walked me through it. So when I was free of it, I knew he knew it was that it was time that, that you had done did what I needed you to do. And you, you, like Paul said, <clears throat> I did this race <clears throat> and I have ran it good and now I'm done. So yeah. that I have fought the good fight and I did. And, and he let me know that, that you, you, you did what I needed you to do because he, he told me that all this word you've been, you've been taught. Okay, you gonna have to walk in now because you sitting there being fed uh -huh. years and years. But what have you been doing with this world? You ain't really had no life life experience that made you have to really like press in. I mean, we had little difficulties. Oh, you know, you and the neighbor ain't getting along, and you no. But I'm talking about when this thing is so close to you that you have to sleep next to it every night. Okay. And you ain't got no other bedroom to go to, okay? Or God telling you, no, you're not. You, you're going to stay right here. You're not going to sleep nowhere else. You're going to sleep right here. What do you do? Do you want to Do you want to kill him at night and say, oh, I don't know what happened. He, he must have taken I don't know sleep. what happened. <laughs> he just stopped breathing in his sleep. He, the he just stopped breathing in his sleep. I don't know. I was asleep. Oh God, over his face. I don't know. I don't know why the why his face was always been a heavy sleeper. Maybe he was crying in the pillow and smothered his own self. I don't know. What do you do? 
you know, so what do you do? And that's, and, and that's why I tell people, sometimes you do have to get yourself, and I, it, it's not something that is just like automatically done. We have to press into it. And sometimes when you hurting and your heart is hurting, that unforgiveness in there, you got to really press through this. It's, it's like you coming through all kinds of spirits to get over to the other side to say, oh, Lord. I made it through and I really forgave them. Alicia is laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Let me but tell you yeah, something. That, that is so true. I can look at that person today and I could feed them. I could do this and I have, I have, there is nothing. When I say there's nothing in the heart of unforgiveness or resentment, there's nothing there. I could love on them. If God choose for me, what do he do? What do you do when he said, oh, let them back in? Let them back in because they ain't got nowhere to go. Like, oh, wait, that's from the devil. That ain't from God. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> are you trying to put me back into phone? I did. That is from God. It reminds what? me of a saying that someone told me. Some things God gives you the courage to go through it. And then some things God gives you the courage to get out of it. Mm -hmm. and you have to be able to discern the thing discern the difference a lot of times you you know when it's god wanting you to go through it because you want to leave you want to leave you ready to go i'm done i am i ain't got no problem leaving and getting out and then god is saying no stay hey. and then it's the things that you are lord i believe you know i can if I just try a little harder, I can save them. I can, I can make them better. Lord, well, I, I know with your I help, they will be better. If I just teach just, you them your light, Lord, they will come to you. They're going to come, God. They're going to come. And God is saying, leave that fool alone before this relationship destroys you. Yeah. Before this relationship kills you. Before exactly. this relationship ends your life. Before you lose your mind. I have both of those situations. I have that. Once eventually when I was in Texas and uh, I was in Texas and it was Texas. I'm letting everybody know Texas is wonderful. It was the situation I was in in Texas that was horrible. And I had to plan my escape. I'm sorry. I had to plan my escape. And I told Natalia, I said, Natalia, we are out of here. She wanted to stay in Texas. I said, girl, we is not staying in Texas. We get out of here. And I dropped that person off to work. I came back home, packed the bag, went to the Greyhound bus, got on the Greyhound and came here to came here to Arizona. I was like, I'm getting out of there. But it was a, one of those situations, like I was saying that, like I was so hurt by the situation, like when I used to tell people about what happened to me when I was in Texas and stuff, I used to cry because I was still hurt and I, I'd be hurt and mad all at the same time. You know what I'm saying? And so mm -hmm. I used to cry when I used to tell a story. And then, and the Lord said, well, you're not over it. <laughs> and the Lord said, well, you're not over it. And no, now I had, until I got to the point where I could tell the story and not cry anymore over the story when I tell the story and stuff like that. And then the Lord was like, okay, now you're over it. And I was over to the point where I still like, I talk to the person every now and then here and there, and you know, and I'd be like, never again. <laughs> never again <laughs> you know and then like in my marriage I had you know he was cuckoo for cocoa pops and I was like um no uh and I was trying because I you know I believe you know I was like okay Lord well I believe that maybe you know if he see the light in me that he will see the light of the Lord and that's what I thought and I was like, okay. But then it came to a point where I was like, okay, Lord, well, I know this can't be from you. <laughs> this can't be from you. And I am letting go. And when I left, the person that had nowhere to go, you know, and I didn't want to really see the person help homeless. So I, I, I helped them find somewhere to stay, helped them get some food, helped them get situated and sorted. They had a job. And then I left them right there where they were at. And then that was the whole thing too. Oh, well, you're supposed to be a Christian. I said, listen, I found you somewhere to stay. I helped right. me get you somewhere to stay. I gave you some food. Even gave you an air conditioner. It was in the summertime. Even gave you an air conditioner. Gave you one of my air conditions and everything else so you won't be hot. 
But I ain't take care of you. You grown. Right. You're in your 40s. I think that's where people get mixed up. Like being a believer does not make you entitled mm -hmm. for to me to allow you to take advantage of me. That, that's, that's not what I'm called to. But so right. Ricky, so back to the person actually went to my pastor <laughs> and told my pastor that I do them out, right? <laughs> and so <laughs> I was like, well, if you live with them, you would have thrown them out too. <laughs> I was like, I if you live with them, you would have thrown them out too. I'm telling you. But you like, like, you, or but like, you, it's like, okay, you something. Throw, she didn't throw them out because if you help him find a place of their own, Helped them with some food, even gave them an air conditioner so they could be cool in the heat. I have shown you all the grace that you need to be shown mm -hmm. because right. you are a mature adult and you had a job. So you are capable of doing the rest of the things that you need to do for yourself. For right. yourself. So you didn't throw them out. You found them somewhere that was theirs so they can no longer be in yours. So you didn't right. throw them well, at first, I did like kind of throw them out, but I figured, you know, you wasn't coming home at night that you That's had somewhere it. to stay. So I figured, well, wherever you've been staying at at night, that you should be able to take your um, luggage with you, your bag, your couple of bags that you had here with you and go stay where you've been staying at, at night. So that was just my thoughts and my feelings on But then eventually I did. I did. I did help them get a little place. And you know, gave food, gave them, and I was like, I felt like I did my part. That's right. Right. And I was like, right where is that? It's like sometimes, <laughs> too, it's like we end up in situations that we have no business being in. True. That's true. So sometimes that. when we when we realize the part that we played in us being in the situation that we're in, it takes away from us having the nerve to get mad. Or being upset, or being unforgiving about what what we dealt with, because it was our own disobedience that led us there. And, you know true, that was know that was, was what yeah that, that, <laughs> that was, went to Texas. Yeah, because that's what helped me to you know forgive my ex husband. You know, it was like God gave me all kinds of warnings not to marry this man. <laughs> gave me sent all kinds of people said, no this is not a good idea you shouldn't do this right but mm -hmm. i was disobedient mm -hmm. i got into the marriage i got into to the relationship and it cost me it cost me a lot it cost me my hair it cost me my mental state all kinds of stuff and i suffered a lot from it and then when i was like you know what i wanted we're trying to find someone to blame for why I was in the scenario, scenario I was in, why I was rock bottom on a mental, emotional breakdown on the merge of having panic attacks and anxiety attacks and trying to figure out who to blame for this. And I had to take a good look in the mirror and say, you made a choice. Yeah. You made the, a choice and this choice cost you. If you would have obeyed God, if you would have listened to all the wisdom that he sent your way to prevent this from happening, but no, you was hurt and you didn't forget the last relationship you was in, you wasn't over your past hurt and everything like that. And you were trying to fill that hole and fill that void with a man instead of God, mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of me, instead of filling that up with the Holy Ghost, you were trying to find pleasure in someone else mm -hmm. and you reap the fruit of what that got you right now and that's what happened with me in texas that's you know, the same I had thing to forgive that person and then i also had to forgive myself for a lot I like, because the truth was who are you really mad at you're you're wanting to blame you're wanting to blame blame everybody but yourself for why you are in the situation <laughs> well, in, my, in my case i didn't because I, because i know that Everything would, before I even went to Texas, like <laughs> everything was in me from my head to my toes told me not to go to Texas. Hey, but you know how you think you all, you know how you think you all in love and all that kind of stuff. So I was not listening. I was listening to the wrong heart. <laughs> and but everything in me was like, do not go to Texas. And I would talk to like people at school when I was in school and they was like, well, you know what you need to do. And I'm like, yes, go to Texas. <laughs> 
in Texas and I wound up in Texas. And then, but when I, you know, the situation was hurt, but I couldn't really blame them. I couldn't blame them. Now I was hurt about what happened, what went down in Texas, but I couldn't really blame them because at the end of the day, the Lord was telling me not to go. And I didn't listen and I went anyway. But then I, but when I got there, I knew that the Lord was going to help me get out of the situation, which he did. <laughs> and he, he did. He, he brought me out of my mess that I was in and he did. And he brought me and my daughter here safely with no problem, which I'm, you know, but that's a whole thing. That's a whole nother thing too. So, you know, remember you have to think about like with the unforgiveness of forgiving folks too. What part also sometimes do you play yes. in that situation too? And you have to think about that part. And then you also have to think about how do you handle that situation as well? Exactly. You know, so, you know, cause I know like uh, one of my situations that I was in, you know, I was hurt by a situation, whatever. And, but I did, I, like, I didn't go face to face, but I did text the person, you know, and apologize to them or whatever for my part that I played in there. Now, they never responded back to the text message. And I know they got it. I know they read it because they said they, they read it. So I know they even looked at it, but they never responded back. So then I kind of got pissed off again. <laughs> All right, see, I did what you said. <laughs> so you apologize. <laughs> this way you have to ask yourself in your heart, was you apologizing? No, I wasn't. But then I to own up to yourself. <laughs> But then I had to check myself. No, I did. I checked myself. I did check myself. I did check myself. I did. But after I got pissed off, after I noticed that they didn't say anything, I did check myself. I was like, you know, but then I did check myself. And I talked to the Lord because I'm like you, Lisa. I do have them conversations like, Father, you know, whatever. And plead my my case to the Lord and stuff like that. And if I check myself and everything else, I know that I know what I have to do as a, a believer of Christ, what I need to do and what I have to do. And I and I just let it be. And I and I love the people still today, you know, and everything else too. And I love them today and what and I will do anything in, in my power that I can to help them in any way I could. You know, but and I think really searching ourselves is like the real the hard thing because there's two reasons why people have a hard time forgiving other people one thing is that um they feel like that person's getting away with it if i forgive them if i let them off the hook they're gonna get away with it and they're gonna think what they're doing is okay and they're you know and they got away with hurting me so i have to hold on to this because pretty much it's you trying to punish that person or trying to pretty much exact what you think is justice. You're trying to get justice for yourself for what happened. I'm not going to let this go. I'm not going to let go of what you did because I don't want you to get away with it. Okay. So that's like one reason. Another reason why other, you know, why people find it hard to forgive um, people is because we feel like we're entitled. We're entitled to the apology. We're entitled for whatever we think that we lost. And we're trying, we're trying to make that person give back what they took, which is something they could they can't give. They didn't give it to you in the first place. And so they have they don't have the ability to give it back to you. If it's trust, if it's security. They didn't give you the ability to trust. They didn't give you the security or the self-worth and the self-value that they have, that, that you had. So even though they destroyed it or they took it from you, they do not have the ability to give it back. So you're wanting them to pay back to you something they don't have the ability to do. That's true. They yes. want them to pay back a debt that they really cannot pay. They cannot restore your trust or your hope back into people. They cannot restore your self-worth and self-value. They can't restore back your faith and your security. They can't restore back the things that you've lost emotionally. They can't remove the fear that they have placed in your life. 
because of the fact that they weren't the ones who gave it to you. They, they didn't give you your security. They didn't give you your self-worth, your self-value. So you're, you're trying to make somebody pay back something to you that they do not have the ability to give you because only God and you can bring that back to you, can give that back to you. And so sometimes, you know, you know, we also like to play that, uh, that fake humility where saying we're sorry and trying to be the bigger person really because we're fishing for an apology or we're fishing for that fulfillment of feeling self-worth or self feeling good or wanting to be right or want really what we're wanting to do is have that per person identify the fact that they hurt us. I want you to see that you hurt me. <laughs> you know, I want you to acknowledge my pain. But the person that hurt you, they know what they've done. It's just that you want you want to make sure they know that they know they, that they you know that, <laughs> that you know that you know. <laughs> you, I want to know that you know that I know that you know that you know. But, <laughs> At the same time, it don't really matter whether you know or if they know. The, the whole thing is, when it comes to anything in life that we are facing with and we're dealing with, God want to see how I or how we react to it and what are we going to do or our action in what we're doing about what has, you know, transparent or transparent in, in the situations that we're dealing with. And I have come to realize that this life and this walk with Christ, like the word of God said that you're going to be test, try, and tribulations are going to come your way. And then all of them, we have something that we have to accomplish. And that is to be able to overcome it and conquer it and walk over it. So really, it's really we fight against ourselves. Mm -hmm. Comes to the things of life that we're dealing with because if we really cast them all over to God and really give them over to God and just just be honest with Him about it, He'll help us through all of it. If, if what we did, but a lot of times we don't do that at first when we're hurt or anything that transpired in our life. The first thing we do, we talk about it or or we react in a way that causes us to want other people to say, you're right and they wrong because everybody want to be right or wrong, you know, and we want the people who are wrong to admit they are wrong because we are right. So I have come to realize it doesn't matter who is right or wrong. It, 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 really, it really matters how you respond to it and how you react to it mm -hmm. when it's done. So if someone says to me, like, say, if I walk into a coffee shop and I don't know no one in there, but just say when I get up to the register, the order, you know, you, you know, you have people day in and day out. They come to work with their problems. Some people don't know how to separate it and they come to work with their problems and you, you come in for a coffee, but they got a snotty attitude with you and you'd be like, Okay, now maybe she got up on the wrong side of the bed today, or you know, maybe you know, he was late for work. You don't know, but I have come to realize every time I face things like hey, this, cousin. and somebody hey, cousin. throw off a reaction to me that I have no reason why, I know it's a test. And you know what I say to myself? Okay, Lisa, I say it under my breath. Okay, Lord, I don't know what the problem is, but maybe something is going on with them. So, you know what, Father, I'm just asking you to just cover them, you know, comfort their heart if they're in pain. I say these things under my breath because I have come to realize that sometimes you could go, you could wake up in the morning with no problem, right? You loving everybody, but you can run into a person <laughs> problem that calls you. You can roll over to the person and be like, oh, there's the problem. Say no. Yes. <laughs> And they throw off the, what they're going through. They throw off those spirits onto you. And then you find yourself in that saying, you know, because someone done get, gave you their spirit and you done took it. So I have come to realize, like, I've recognized these things. Like, I'll walk into something. I'll be like, okay. 
All right, it seemed like they in a nasty mood today. So okay. the Lord says I'm, like, I'm like, do you need a, well, before COVID, I used to be like, do you need a hug? I think you need a hug. Do you need a hug? You need a hug today? Is that what it is? The first thing I do is I have to say, okay, Father, I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to pray for them right now because I don't know what they're going in and I'm not going to allow these demons to cause me to come out of myself. So right. I put, Pray under my breath for them real quick. And sometimes you can see that the change will come sometime if that's what you do first before you be like, well, what's wrong with you? I mean, I only came in here to ask you for a coffee. So what you giving me an attitude? For? You know, that's our flesh. So when you throw that at a person, then they're going to get even more angry at you. So when you see that, I have, you know, they've done, they'd be like, oh, well, what do you want? They come with these attitudes. I'll be like, oh, I just want a coffee. And, and I'd be like, oh, well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And the whole time they're giving me a whole lot of shade over here and just being that <laughs> reason. And I'd be like, well, you have a one. said they throwing her some shade. <laughs> That's right. You're using big words, Lisa, shade. They said, <laughs> big words. She's being hip. <laughs> she big words. She's talking about shade. <laughs> they throw it on me for no reason. Then you know it's you been watching? Who you been watching on TV talking about Real shade? Real partly cloudy. In here, because there's a lot of shade. <laughs> <laughs> when it's really sunny outside, someone being extra, extra, read all about it. Where's the newspaper at? Right? <laughs> yeah. Somebody threw the newspaper boy at. All right. I'll uh, tell you. Uh, <laughs> you have to know <laughs> what you dealing with. <laughs> Right, I tell you, I tell you. Sometimes you have to choose peace. Like some, and sometimes it's hard. Like for me, I was like, I, I'm like, for me, it was very, very hard for me to walk away from people. Like it's like I, I, I. It was very hard for me to get into relationships or friendships or whatever the case might be because I get super attached because I had rejection issues right <laughs> that's gonna be our next topic next time we, that's gonna be our next topic I have rejection. With rejection and so sometimes i would i would deal with people who were not good for me out of fear of letting them go mm -hmm. out of fear of being alone and sometimes we're also called to peace and sometimes we're all, we're called to, to guard our own peace, guard our heart, guard our own minds. And That's not right. everyone, Party to mind. That's right. are you supposed to be letting into your mind? Are you supposed to be letting into, to your heart, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to, to have those, the, those places. Sometimes we allow people to, to occupy space in our, our lives that they didn't mm -hmm. earn. They, they never, uh -huh. or they don't have their they don't have the right um mindset or they're not the right person for that place in your life and they're they're occupying a space that someone else should be feeling that someone else could be in, in your life and you're afraid of letting letting it go because maybe um you've been in that relationship for a long time or that person's all you know or um because they're family <laughs> right and i would say you know jesus says who is my mother my brother and my sister the ones who believe of, uh, upon my father that is my mother my brother and and my sister you know so there are some some people who are called to walk with you and sometimes that separation might even be family members, you know, some, sometimes it is. And sometimes when it's family, sometimes that's the hard thing because right. It's this, Oh, well, we're family. So you're obligated to me, right? I'm entitled. I'm entitled to everything that belongs to you. I'm entitled to your life. You're so you have to put up with me. You have to put up with whatever I do. That's how like and one of my kids, one of my kids said that to me. One of my kids, you know, they, I don't know, they just don't want to grow up, but you know, they, they learn it now, but they actually said to me, well, I didn't ask to be here. And I'm saying to myself, neither did I, but I'm dealing with the life that I got. <laughs> I didn't say, oh, okay, send me, oh Lord. With your creation, you need to ask your creator. You need to take right. that over to your creator. <laughs> 
heard well, of when that. they first said it, I was thinking they were talking about being here in Arizona, but then the globe was like, no, being born. born and I was born. like, well, I ain't asked to be born either, but I'm dealing with what I got. Whether you was asked to be born or you was planned to be born, it doesn't matter. Life still come and you right. still have to learn how to grow up right. and move it through life. Yeah, really. but but. At the same time, I heard a pastor say that you do you are not supposed to have a lot of friends. So, mm -hmm. I, so I was like, wow. So I'm saying, okay. So he he got to explain and he was like, let me tell you something. He said, in your lifetime, you will only find maybe one or two friends, friends in your life. Because a friend is what the word of God said, that sticks closer to you than a brother and that is willing to die for you. You understand what I'm saying? And he said, you don't find too many people that are friends. A friend has to earn their right. There's there's different levels in your life that you let some people into this level. Just like he like he put it like the holies are holies and the tabernacle. You know, you got the outer court, the inner court, and the most holy part. He said, now the friend, that's the most holy part because they close to your heart. Everybody ain't supposed to be close to your heart because some people are not structured or they're not built or they're they're not mature enough to right. be that close to you to be able to deal with you and who you are even meaning that sometimes they may have to tell you you're wrong because see a friend the words that god said faithful is the one of a friend so a friend is not a person that's just there to always say amen amen to you. A friend, is also, a friend is also there to tell you you're wrong in that and you out of the will of God and you need to go pray and fast because you done lost your way. You know, that that's a friend. And he said, you're not supposed to have more than one or two of those in your life because that is a person who has to earn their right to get that close to you. You ain't supposed to tell your secret to everybody. you're not supposed to, right. to everybody. Your right. secret is supposed to go to God, but if you have a friend that's that close to your heart, then that means they have earned the right to get that close, that they know your secrets and even know the most hidden things of you. So when he, you know, was teaching on this, I was like, you know, well, wait a minute, this, this is an eye opener because we as human beings are always say, oh, that's my friend. Oh, mm -hmm. that's Oh, this is my friend. Oh, this is my friend. No, they're not. I even tell my kids and my grandkids, I said, they're not your friend. Oh, grandma, I said, no, they're not. They're not your friend. They're your associates. Because you know them good enough just to be associate. Because they're comrades. That's yes, it. We, because like, we have they, common things that we like together. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. because when it really comes down to it, if anything happens or or something was to happen, you know who the friends are. And when you don't see them people, then they're mm -hmm. not your friends. Right. Right. Because the friends say, don't stay around. They only they don't just come around when life is good and everything is going good. Oh yeah, you're living good. We got some money to party and we can hang out. Oh that's yeah. Kind of, that's kind of something what me and I Adrian, was talking about earlier today too. <laughs> These things and you're down and out and literally you don't even, you wondering where the next meal was coming from and nobody's around, huh? And nobody come and say, girl, I know what you're going through. I may not have much either, but you and the family come over and we're going to take this one chicken and we're going to divide it up and feed all 10 of us. One mm -hmm. chicken. You know what I'm saying? That is when you know someone is your friend. Mm -hmm. Because they coming to support and undergird you and no matter what you're going through. They're not just there when everything is looking good. What about that time when I, I can't even pay my bills, but you got money in the bank. Would you go in the bank and take your money all out and say, hi, girl, I'm going to pay your bills for you. Not looking for it back. Don't don't come telling me, oh girl, I'm gonna pay your bill, but when you get your check, give me back my money. Right. See, okay. Okay. Yeah. 
because you're supposed to give without expectation. That's right. Right. And so this is like when you know the heart of, of someone because of the fact it, it you prefer, and this is where people don't get where love go, love is about the goodwill, caring for that person and wanting the good intentions for them, the having the best intentions for them. And sometimes that's even doing the hard thing like telling them the truth about themselves, correcting them and saying, hey, look, the, what you're doing is wrong. And I, I cannot, um, you know what? I cannot, you know, come into agreement with you on this. And you know what? If you want to be mad at me and you want to hate me, fine. You know, that's just, you know, you're just going to have to hate me, but I'd rather you hate me and I, I warn you to protect you than to try to get you to be pleased with me and not That's warn you of wrong. the danger right. of your behavior. That's right. And also saying like, okay, your friend do ask you for money or whatever the case might be, and they don't have the ability to pay you back. And then you know they're saying they're, they're, uh, they're avoiding you because they're ashamed of the fact that they can't pay you back. You know, to really go up to that friend and say, hey, look, if the money is going to keep keep you from being in friendship with me, forget about the money. I prefer you. What about that friend that, you know, you gave them the money because they couldn't pay the real. Now they got to go on, you know, they get money and then they go on shopping and they bought a new um, Louis Vuitton like, bag and some new shoes. You have to... I you tell know, people, what do you do in that situation? You never you give something up. that you expect to have back. You it's pray for them and say, thank you, Jesus, that they up on their feet again. Because yeah. let me tell you, the word, of, see, I heard, uh, I don't know, I don't heard so many people, I don't know who said it. <laughs> who voice is it? <laughs> but, but somebody said it that I, that I respected, said, don't give no more than you can forget. So I heard- I think Apostle has said that before. I heard, I, many, I heard many pastors taught on it. And I heard a pastor said like, cause he was talking about one of his family members and he was saying how, you know, when he got to where he was at and he was a pastor and well-known and had a big church and everything and him and his wife, you know, God done blessed them and they, you know, they don't have, they don't have a need. They're in a position where they can just get, you know, if the Lord said, give that man $2,000 cause he need it, they got it. They can give it to him. Right. So he said there was a time that one of the family members, they was going through something and he gave them the money. And he said, I ain't talking about no little money. He said, I gave them a nice piece of money. He said, and when I gave it to them, they did ask to let me borrow the money. Mm -hmm. Right. So he said, and they was expected to give it back to me. He mm -hmm. said, but when it was time for them to give it back to me, like you said, like they duck in, they don't come around, or you know, when you come around, they fleeing or whatever, whatever. He said, so at first, like his, you know, the flesh said to him, okay, he act like he don't know he owed me. Right. Okay. And now, you know, the person, you know, the family member was back, you know, on their feet or whatever. He said, so he act like he don't know me. You know. So um, he said it was bothering him a little bit. So he said, but he was in his prayer, prayer study one time. He was praying and getting ready for, you know, service and stuff. And he said, the Lord came to him and said to him, how can you sit here and feel like you have a problem with him not giving you back the money with with all that I have blessed you with. He said, regardless if he said, lend it to me, let me borrow it, you know, it don't matter. But he was saying what the Lord was trying to show him is that you gave it to him because I gave it to you and gave you enough where you should be able to share it. I don't give it to you to hoard. When God bless you, he bless you to be a blessing. Unto so people, right? Not for you to sit around and be like, oh, I got a couple of millions here and me and the wife. He said, that's not what, even though he give it to you so you can live good, 
but he's giving you more than enough and your cup is overflowing. So that overflow well, supposed you can to use go for something else. else, right? So he said, the Lord, he said, so he had to repent. And he said, he called the cousin up and he told them, he said, you asked to borrow the money from me and I gave it to you, but I want you to know that I gave it to you and you don't have to give it back because it was my love offering to you because God has blessed me enough to be able to share. But what I have blessed you with, you do it for someone else. And don't you be sorry now that you have more than enough. Right. Well, he said, and that's what God want us to do. He want us to be able, whatever he has blessed us and given us that we share with others. others right. And let them know that just be this how uh -huh. they're engaged to you. When they say we, give it forward, give that's forward. Right. <laughs> give it on forward. Your, you be a blessing to someone else that uh -huh. makes you and say, I need. Stop always talking about, but you know, I gave you 52 months ago and then you can't. <laughs> Amen. And I gave you a hundred. You remember August 12th at 1962. <laughs> you were wearing you. a purple shirt and I had the gray thing. <laughs> look, look, and, that, and, and then the, it was a half moon in the sky. And that's where unforgiveness. And this red car and drove by. You know, because you know people, they wanted that money back. People be calculating. They be calculating. <laughs> They be starting a whole resentment towards people because they mm -hmm. said, lend it to me, but then they never paid it back. So you'd be like, oh, I lent them money four years ago and they still they pay me. I, I tell people all the time, I say, you know what? I don't give nothing to nobody that I can't say be blessed because yeah, if I give about it. that's right. If I can't forget about it, because if there's anything I give you and I'm still remembering about it, then I really didn't give it to you in love. I gave it to you with a tax on it. Okay. Right. So you, what is that? Usury? When, well, like a bank bank person, you want it plus interest. <laughs> what was that? It was a show I watched. It was a movie. And uh, on the movie, it, uh, the boy loaned another boy 20 bucks. And he was dodging the boy. Every time the boy see the guy that loaned him the 20 bucks, but he was dodging him. He kept dodging him. So the older guy said to him, he was like, and he wanted to chase the boy down the street. But the other guy, the older guy said to the boy who loaned the other man the money, he was like, why are you chasing him for $20? He was like, because he said he wanted to borrow $20. He said, but do you really like the guy? He was like, eh, you know, I could do without. He said, well, you just spent $20 to get rid of him. So why are you chasing him down? That $20 that, that he owe you, keep him away from you. So you just... Spent twenty dollars to get rid of them. So why are you worried about it? Just go <laughs> with your. <laughs> That's a good way. And you, know, and you don't have to deal with him no more because he's gonna keep dodging you until he pay you back the money. And so that you ain't got to deal with him. <laughs> That's the truth. Right. So the guy was like, "Yeah, you're right." So, you know, I say, like friends, they know the intent of your heart. They know they know your heart. They know your mind. They know how you think. You know, and so even if you're having a bad day. Or yet you you know you was kind of mean or you was on on a little nasty or whatever the case might be, they're not easily offended because they know you. It's like okay, she's just going, she's just tripping right now because she got the you know you, you know she when she when she feel better we'll talk or you know that friend knows how knows your person knows your nature and so they know how to talk with you to get you to come back uh -huh. to reason and come back to 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 a certain place and that's why they're your friends that's why they're close to you because of the fact that they know you they know how you think they know how you feel they know what makes you tick they know what gets you going what can send you over they know what boundaries not to cross they know you know just how far to take things and how far not to take things why because they know you they know what, what you know, um, really moves you. And I find like even in, in, in Jesus' story, the only true, true friend he had was John. You know, not even, you know, not even. Because you know, John says so. Because John says so. No. <laughs> no because, first of all, John was the only one he told 
who the betrayer was. Out of all the disciples, John's the only one he let stay alive and not and not die. But they said that John was closer to his heart than any of the disciples. Because he know, knew how to keep a secret. That's why. And John was the one. He wasn't a blabbermouth. John was the one he entrusted his mama to. Mm. And when, and I always tell people, if you but really John know, was the only one there when he was crucified. <laughs> right. Everybody else ran away. Was there to the very <laughs> end. Yeah. That's how you know John, that John was his, his friend. John said, I got your back, dog. I got you. He said, we're right. about to die. Like, you know what? I said, Jesus entrusted John with the, the most important thing. When time had passed and people were forgetting about who Christ was and didn't know who he was, John was the only disciple that was from the beginning who got to well, tell. He was the only God one that was left. Wrote a mm -hmm. God, you know, who wrote, who wrote a gospel. So God, literally Jesus left him the responsibility of yes. reminding people of who he was. But he was the only one left because all the rest of them had been killed him. <laughs> the kind of person mm -hmm. that he John was the only one that got to write that story. He the one that they poisoned, but they thought he was dead after a couple of days and they came back and he was still alive. That's why they put him on the island because they tried to kill him and he didn't die. So they just put him out there and figured- You said, oh. not my friend, friend. That not was my like friend. Adam when he got his oh, I kept trying to kill him. He's like, nope, <laughs> not now. Now ain't your time. You know, get up. Not my friend. <laughs> You ain't gonna have my friend. <laughs> so, so when it comes to unforgiveness, what we got to do? We seek the Lord. At the end of the day. <laughs> That's the answer. Seek I would say, Lord. like you know, I would, I always say, do the the fast that God has chosen, the fast that God has chosen, and um, we we talked about it, but it was like, first of all, the. First of all, letting people, letting people be free of the accusations that you give them because of your hurt, mm -hmm. you know, loosing people from your preassumptions of what you think that they meant and all what you thought that they were saying and how, but you was really thinking this is like, who told you that? Who told you that? <laughs> but you're coming out of your hurt place. And so you're making false accusations and of people's intentions and what they think because of the things in your heart. When you start recognizing how you're mistreating people and you're, you're hurting people because of the fact that you're in pain and hey, you're daddy. making accusations <laughs> and having That's the, the wrong you can I see you on the screen, hey, Governor. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> That's my father in the back. That's Elliot Stutter, everyone. Uh, Dad, you on Facebook Live. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Get it, Granddaddy. <laughs> but when you realize, okay, you're, you're making accusations against people because of your own hurt place, you know, yeah. it starts to make you examine your ways. And then also, when you start to realize the kind of burden that you're putting on other people, this when you unrealistic yeah. expectations, you, you start uh, to develop unrealistic Facebook. expectations of other people <laughs> because of what you think people should be in your life. You know, like, your idealism of what a good friend is, <laughs> like your idealism of what a good father or mother or sister or brother is, your unrealistic expectations and burdens and weights and pressure you put on people to fulfill a place in your life that God is supposed to fill and be something in your life that God is supposed to be. So then you're putting your burden and all the pressure of all of your, your undealt with issues on the people who do love you, who are called to walk with you, but you are making it hard. You're making it hard for them because of all of your unrealistic expectations to guard your heart because you've so you been hurt. Know what is a, you know what is a good scripture for people to pray who feel like they have unforgiveness towards people? They need to pray Psalm 51 because that is a psalm that David prayed when he was going through all the trials and tests with what he was going through. And Psalm 51 was a 
was a prayer that I prayed until I was able to really come to the Lord with a clean heart and really, really come before him without having that homosity and unforgiveness in my heart from the person who who I went through the problems and stuff with. I had to pray that psalm every day with I others. I had to pull it up. It created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit. I had to pull it up. This. Yes. So we may not know it. And I had to pray that, that psalm every day until I got like a release in me that I could really even come to God and really even come before him because sometimes when you got unforgiveness in your heart, you can't even pray to God. You know, you be mm -hmm. like, you be so mad, you don't even want to say, well, God, can you help me? Not with that, you be so mad, you just want to complain about how they did you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You so all you all God is hearing is you complaining how the person did you wrong, yes. not how you for, gonna forgive the person yes. and help you get over the hurt to mend your heart and stuff like that yes. so you can get over the hurt. No, you're just complaining to the Lord how they. I know you said vengeance, is Lord, Lord, Lord. To be vengeful, <laughs> and that's why I said you know whenever I when people if people would come to the realization that there's there's no right and wrong and you don't hold the whole truth because you're seeing everything from just your perspective, your perception only, not the other perception, not the other person's perspective. So therefore you, you don't have the whole story. You just have your side of the story from your point of view, but there's your truth, there's their truth, and then there's the truth. And only God knows the intents and the motive of every person's mm -hmm. heart. Right, right. But and you know, only one who can make a righteous judgment on it because That's he true. knows everybody's motives and, mm -hmm. and what their intentions were behind their actions and why they judged and made the decisions that they made. But you know, it's true what people have said, hurting people hurt people. And this is the reason why we need the Lord in our life because of the fact that life and, and different things we've been through in life and struggles and growing up and it could have been our parents or it could have been a family member it could have been whatever because everyone have a story and all of our stories are not very good stories some some people have grown up and they have been through a lot in their life even coming into this world being a child and being innocent they have just had one bad thing after another after another after another and then you you meet this person when they're an adult or wherever you may meet them at but they have gone through life and life have brought them through a lot and there's a toll on them so because we don't know all of that and we're just seeing them from where we're seeing them, seeing them at, our perspective of who they are is based on what we see and what, and what they do and, and what they don't do or whatever. And that's why God always say that he knows the heart of man and everyone that we see and say, oh, they going to hell. God, they ain't going to heaven. <laughs> don't be fooled. Mm -hmm. Because even though people may do bad things, it don't always mean that their heart is bad. It's just that they're only reacting for what they know. And, mm -hmm. and what they don't know, they can't be accounted for. That's why the word of God said, when you've been taught the word and everything that you have heard and been taught, you are accountable for it. Right, right. You can't be accountable for something that you don't know or that you have not heard. So even when it came to me, when I had to go through and the Lord told me everything that you've been taught, Lisa, you won't have to live this thing now. You have been taught all this word all these years and now you get into a marriage and, and you dealing with some things you want to run. Uh-uh, baby, you ain't running through this. You, you I'm won't running want my you, life. I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you be trying to do. That's why I'm like, you're going on my place. Yeah. yeah. No, I have that scripture. You, you all right, go to, ahead. Read the scripture now, Adrian. Go so ahead. So, one it says i um have mercy upon me O god according to your steadfast love according to the multitude of your tender mercy and loving kindness blot out my transgression wash me thoroughly and repeatedly from my iniquity and guilt and cleanse me and make me holy holy pure from my sin 
for I am conscious of my transgression and I acknowledge them. My sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and faultless in your judgment. And faultless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth uh, I'm brought forth in a state of iniquity. My mother was sinful who conceived me and I too am sinful. Behold, you desire truth in the inner being. Make me therefore to know wisdom in my inmost heart. Purify me with hyssop and I shall be clean ceremonially. Wash me and I shall in reality be withered whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness and be satisfied. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Had your face from, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my guilt and iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right, preserving, um, perse per persevering and steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors, transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted and return to you. Deliver me from blood guilt, guiltiness and death. O God, the God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness, your rightness and your justice. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise for you delight not in sacrifice or else I would give it. You find no pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, the sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, broken down with sorrow for sin and humbly and thoroughly pen pen penitent such Oh God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in the sacrifice of righteousness, justice, and right with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bullocks will be offered upon your altar. So God doesn't want yo yo uh Lord, I worship you when you got a, a nasty heart. You got to sing that John P. Keats song, created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. A clean heart, a clean heart. <laughs> well, we're going to end this right here with that because no need to say anything else after that. We can end with John P. Keats song. We're not able to pull it up. But we do want to thank everyone for joining us today for Women of Power Wednesday. I hope you was empowered somehow some way um if you have any suggestions about things that you want to hear from us on our woman power wednesdays just inbox us inbox us on uh, facebook or instagram or on uh, our personal you know um teresa where am i teresa <laughs> teresa scudder you'll find me you'll see my picture up there or not asia reeves or her facebook or lisa hers is under lisa bradley you can just inbox us and be like, hey, I heard you guys. And, you know, I think such and such is a good topic. Would y'all speak on it? We are here every third Wednesday at noon. Um, if we could get a replay, we will replay it again that even at 530. I don't know if Facebook is acting a little shady with some things. So we're going to find out what we could do about it. But um, just let us know. And um, thank you again for joining us. And we see you again next week, next month, sorry, next month on the third Wednesday at 12 noon. Thank you for joining us. Bye. See ya. Hey, you got it. You're getting it. You got it good. Yeah, yeah I got it. I got to get through all the commercials. All right. Here we go. <laughs> now without further ado, I introduce you to my pastor. Reverend John P. P. and the New Life Community Choir! Create!